Dear media guests, a warm welcome to this year's annual press conference of Škoda Auto. The COVID pandemic, unfortunately, makes it impossible to greet you personally in the Czech Republic this year. We have therefore decided to present you the figures of the past financial year and the outlook for 2021 in a virtual press conference. There are two channels available, English and Czech. You can choose them on the website skoda-apc.com slash livestream. Before we get to the agenda, I would like to briefly introduce you to the two vehicles we brought you with us today. On my left side, you can see the Škoda Enyaq Sportline IV, the new sporty version of our first fully electric SUV. And on the other hand, we have the brand new Škoda Kushak. We just presented our first model of the India 2.0 product offensive to the public last week. It will be on sale in India from summer. Both vehicles are of great strategic importance for Škoda Auto. More about this in a moment from our CEO, Thomas Schäfer. Before our CEO starts with his presentation and explains the results for the fiscal year 2020 to you, let me briefly introduce you to the participants of today's press conference. At first, I'd like to welcome our CEO, Thomas Schäfer, to his first annual press conference in his new role. And now we come to somebody who knows Skoda for many decades. I'm talking about the chairman of our social partner, Kobo, Mr. Povšik. Thank you for joining us today. Jaroslav Povšik will be attending our Q&A session at the end of the press conference to also answer your questions. Dear media guests, let me introduce you to the other board members who will speak today. I welcome our CFO, Klaus-Dieter Schürmann, who will give you an in-depth analysis of the figures. Martin Jan, our new board member for sales and marketing, explains to you the development of the markets and vehicle segments. Dear guests, of course, you can ask your questions after the presentations, as always. We have prepared two options for this. You can submit your questions at the Slido window you can find on the right side of the live stream site. Please ask your questions in Czech or English, or send them directly to media at skoda-auto.cz. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I hand over to the CEO of Skoda Auto, Thomas Schäfer. Thomas, please. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Škoda Auto's annual press conference. We are all looking back on a 2020 that has been extremely challenging, both personally and economically. According to the International Monetary Fund, global economic output shrank by a staggering 3.5 percentage points. The European Automotive Association, ASEA, states that European car manufacturers produced around 4.2 million fewer vehicles than expected. It's a real stress test for the entire industry. Recently, I was asked in an interview whether it's possible to remain optimistic in times like these. I think it's possible, of course. I'm very optimistic, in fact, because I've witnessed what the Škoda team can achieve in a crisis year like this. Let's take a quick look back. Very early on during the 39-day production shutdown, we began preparing intensively for the restart of our three Czech plants. In cooperation with our social partner, Kovo, we defined and implemented 80 specific measures to protect the workforce as much as possible. At this point, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Mr. Povšik, the chairman of the Kovo Works Council, who is here with us today Thank you for the trustful cooperation. During this time, there was tremendous social engagement in the Czech Republic. Many people sewed masks in their homes, did the shopping for elderly neighbors, and volunteered at social and medical centers. At Škoda, we also came up with many ideas to help in the fight against the virus. Take, for example, the urgently needed respirators that we 3D printed, especially for medical staff in the hospitals. 
Škoda also made sure the volunteers had access to mobility. 100 Octavia Combis were given to social and medical aid services, and more than 200 cars and electric scooters from our sharing platforms HoppyGo and BeRider were made available free of charge to health staff. We dealt with the difficult situation in a simply clever way. Our company became more flexible and agile during this time, and we were able to make decisions quicker. The pandemic provided a boost for the digital transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, after the shutdown in spring, we were not only managing a quick ramp up of production again, but also the sale of our vehicles. Thanks to a collaborative effort by our sales department, Škoda importers and dealers' deliveries developed positively in the second half of the year. All in all, 2020 was a challenging year for Škoda, but nevertheless a successful one. Before I talk about the most important key figures, I would like to give a brief explanation of the terms with which some of you might already be familiar. The annual report is created for Škoda Auto AS, shown here on the left. It is prepared in accordance with Czech IFRS, and the values are stated in crowns. The statements I will be making refer to the consolidated Škoda Auto Group, that is, the Škoda brand, whose key figures are also published by the Volkswagen Group, shown here on the right-hand side. This is where the main foreign and affiliated companies are consolidated in the balance sheet and income statements. The group accounting standard according to IFRS applies and the values are stated in euros. Now I would like to briefly discuss the most important key figures. We delivered more than one million vehicles worldwide for the seventh year in a row, despite the pandemic. Our new board member for sales and marketing, Martin Jahn, will give you the specifics on the various models and regions later. Our share of the European car market increased by 0.5 percentage points to 5.4%. In other words, Škoda has further strengthened its position as one of the leading brands in the volume segment. Our revenue totaled 17 billion euros, which is 14% less than the previous year. Škoda generated an operating profit of 756 million euros in the 2020 financial year, a great success given the situation. Our pre-tax return on sales remains at a very respectable level of 4.4%. My colleague Klaus-Dieter Schürmann, board member for finance and IT, will be presenting the figures in detail for you in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Škoda has confidently made it through the crisis year 2020. Thanks to the excellent work of my predecessor, from whom I took over a company in very good condition last August. And thanks to the first-class teamwork of the entire Škoda team, to whom I would like to express my sincere thanks at this point. However, 2020 was about much more than just Corona. We made important strategic decisions for Škoda. By assuming responsibility for the regions of Russia and North Africa, we are taking on additional tasks for the Volkswagen Group besides India. The next generation of the Superb is being developed alongside the VW Passat in Mlada Boleslav and built at the VW plant in Bratislava from 2023 on. Thereby, capacity for more than 150,000 vehicles in Kwasini is released. We'll be using it to create additional volumes of our popular SUV models, as well as for the successor to the Fabia Combi that is confirmed for 2023. And the Kodiak will stay in Kwasini. It's a strong signal for the team that has been producing our bestseller there since 2016. Many more steps will follow to take Škoda to the next level. By the way, the company's very first steps also came to the fore in 2020. 125 years of Škoda, a very special anniversary, a strong motivation, and at the same time, a great responsibility. In our anniversary year, the team has shown what Škoda is all about. Excellent team spirit, high degree of adaptability, and the will to successfully overcome difficult situations together. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we not only celebrated 125 years of Škoda, but also the market launch of important models, like the Octavia. It's an icon that all Škodians are proud of. The all-new model family has never been as diverse as it is in this generation. Liftback or estate, front or all-wheel drive, petrol, diesel, CNG, mild or plug-in hybrid, and of course, the sporty RS and RS IV models, a wide selection that has been very well received by our customers. In September, we then presented our Enyaq IV, the first Škoda model based on the modular electrification toolkit which, with which we are making e-mobility simply clever. It has already won numerous awards, including the prestigious Best Car Awards from the German magazine Automotor und Sport. Ladies and gentlemen, the Enyaq IV heralds the dawn of a new era for Škoda. We are at the beginning of a new, exciting decade. Our next-level Škoda program for the future defines how we want to shape it for Škoda. We are focusing on three priorities. Firstly, we are expanding our model portfolio towards the entry-level segments. We are adding additional, particularly affordable, entry-level variants to each of our existing model series. These have been costed down to the last penny and will therefore appeal to an even larger target group. At the same time, we are intentionally holding on to models like the Fabia Combi as they show that Škoda is serious about affordable mobility. Second, we are exploring new markets for further growth in the volume segment. After India, we have now also assumed responsibility for the regions of Russia and North Africa within the Volkswagen Group. We also see great potential, for example, in the ASEAN region. And thirdly, we are engaging with sustainability and diversity in every aspect of our work. We have set ourselves ambitious goals with our green future strategy. We have already achieved one goal. Our Rachla B plant has been Škoda's Auto, Škoda Auto's first CO2 neutral production facility since the end of last year. And when it comes to diversity, I'm also committed to making rapid and sustainable progress. Because one thing is clear, diverse teams achieve better results. Ladies and gentlemen, with these three priorities, we are of course not forgetting one thing, to invest strategically in the future technologies of our industry. We will have invested around 2.5 billion euros in new technology by 2025. We are investing 1.4 billion in expanding e-mobility, 650 million will be spent on digitalizing Škoda, and with 350 million, we will be modernizing our plants and production facilities. Ladies and gentlemen, with these billions in investments, we are making Škoda fit for the future so that we can emerge as winners from the automotive industry's transformation process. But one thing is also clear, this money must first be earned. How do we do this? To put it plain and simple, we have to make Škoda more efficient. Therefore, we are not talking about making cosmetic changes, but about reconsidering the fundamentals. All spending will be examined. We are reducing bureaucracy, simplifying processes, and eliminating unnes anything unnecessary. Last year alone, we already saved more than 550 million euros in fixed cost. Now, we keep on pushing and take Škoda to the next level in terms of efficiency, which is why we are calling this program Next Level Efficiency. We are discussing all the steps and measures in close cooperation with our social partner, Kovo. It's important to me that we are all on the same page here. Our advantage is that we are starting this race from a position of strength. Our products resonate very well with our customers around the world, and we have an outstanding team driving us forward. So there are many good reasons to be optimistic. And now I hand over to Klaus-Dieter Schürmann, who will be giving you a more detailed insight into the 2020 figures. Klaus-Dieter. Thank you, Thomas. Dear ladies and gentlemen, Dobry Den and a very warm welcome also from my side. Over the next few minutes, I will present our annual financial statements and key figures for the year 2020. 
Going beyond, I would like to give you a very preliminary financial outlook of the Skoda Auto Group for this year. We started into 2020 with considerable momentum. Our performance of the first two months was promising, and then suddenly the world was put on emergency stop. The COVID-19 pandemic quickly set the agenda. The Czech Republic declared a state of emergency, and we had to shut down our plans completely. Sales markets worldwide were either closed or went into lockdown. The massive business setback caused by the first wave of the pandemic is mirrored, obviously, in our figures. In the first quarter, we still achieved an operating profit of 307 million euros despite the headwinds in March. In the second quarter, our production was completely shut down for about a month and distribution channels in Europe were closed across the board. In April, all key performance indicators went straight into the red. Second quarter sales and revenues almost halved in comparison of the first quarter. Our net cash flow was highly negative. Ladies and gentlemen, in this challenging environment, we adopted tough countermeasures and shifted immediately to a consistent crisis cost and cash management. We quickly restarted production at the end of April. In May, we established the situation we stabilized the situation and realized a slightly positive result. By, the, by June, we were almost back to normal. Nonetheless, the bottom line of the second quarter was a negative operating profit of negative 78 million euros. Throughout the rest of the year, our sales restart measures gained traction. In terms of cost and capital expenditures, our short-term special program with intelligent cuts and strict discipline proved effective. And we worked intensively on optimizing working capital. As a result, we achieved a fast turnaround. In the third quarter, the operating profit rebounded to 241 million euros. In a strong fourth quarter, we increased our operating profit to 287 million euros. Overall, we cut back on our fixed costs by over 500 million euros. We achieved a clearly positive operating profit and we kept net cash flow in the black. Ladies and gentlemen, for the 2020 corona crisis year, we present exceptionally robust results. Sales revenues fell only by 14% in comparison to the last year and uh, were at 17 billion euros. To a certain extent, we were able to compensate lower sales volumes through price position improvements. In spite of the adverse circumstances, we achieved a positive operating profit of 756 million euros and a return on sales of 4.4%. In cross comparison with other volume manufacturers, we maintain our position among the top performers. Earnings after tax amounted to 529 million euros, mainly due to strain on financial results. Our positive net cash flow of 213 million euros shows that the Skoda Auto Group remains financially well on track even in difficult times. It is generating cash surpluses and we can continue to finance investment programs from our own funds. Let me break down the operating profit in a little more detail. In 2019, we achieved an all-time high of almost 1.7 billion in profits. In 2020, we experienced an entirely different crisis situation with the extraordinary COVID-19 pandemic. There were fierce headwinds and negative effects that I will discuss briefly. The pandemic led to a significant decline in sales and caused major disruption in the supply chain and production. At the same time, reduced staff availability and increased anti-COVID protection measures lowered productivity and led to various extra costs. Finally, the restart incentives secured both our sales volumes and our order bank. However, these also came at a cost. Over the year, exchange rates developed negatively for certain currencies, including important markets like the Polish Slotty, the Norwegian crown, or the R Russian ruble. Overall, the devaluation of the Czech crown against the euro also had a detrimental effect on our books. Material cost increased due to CO2 and exhaust emission standards in the EU, and we had to make 
substantial provisions for exceeding the CO2 requirements in Europe last year. In this environment, we achieved cutbacks on fixed costs, as mentioned, of over 550 million euros, with a full impact on the bottom line. Our ongoing Skoda performance program contributed with 675 million in this reporting. Again, a significant share goes to the bottom line, and to some extent, we will even have lasting effects over the next coming years. With these efforts, though, we could just partially close the initial gap of well over 1 billion euros caused by COVID-19 directly. Taking all factors into account, we delivered a resilient performance in the face of great challenges in the year 2020. Our employees can be proud of doing their utmost. They deserve our thanks for their strong commitment and flexibility in these difficult times. Ladies and gentlemen, now amid the coronavirus turmoil, the course for future success is being set. In some respects, the transformation has even picked up speed. This is another reason why we continue to invest at a very high level in 2020. We only deliberately and selectively reduced capital expenditure during the corona crisis to safeguard liquidity and cash flow. Our investments in tangible assets amount to 850 million euros in total last year. This is roughly one third less than 2019 when investments soared to a historical high level of just above 1.3 million euros. The lion's share in 2020, around 380 million euros, again went into our equipment and expansions at our Czech production sites. Some examples. For example, we increased the manufacturing flexibility of our plant in Kwaseni, and we achieved the CO2 neutral production situation in Rachlabi, as already mentioned before. Consistently, we expand our plant here in Lada Boleslav for new products, as, for example, this wonderful new ENIAC electric vehicle. And we are developing and extending our production of electrical components, for example, PF batteries, which we're producing since 2020, and we're investing into BEF battery production for these kind of vehicles for the entire Volkswagen Group, which we will start in 2022. We have invested heavily in recently opened prototyping center, for example, here in Lada Boleslav, and in an ultra-modern central pilot hall equipped with state-of-the-art equipment and technology. In India, since 2019, we have been extending the Pune plant, where we will be producing the local A0 product family under the, leader, under the India 2.0 project. The pioneering SUV model Skoda Kushak, which you will see here on the right side, just celebrated its world premiere a few days ago. In 2020, we also kept expenditures on primary R&D at a high level, but reduced it in comparison to the year before to 712 million euros. As we notably capitalized assets and primary R&D costs over the past years and increased them, the average assets invested increased in our books against 2019 again. On the other side, in contrast, the operating profit after tax decreased due to the crisis. So no surprise, the return on investment therefore dipped to 10.4%. Nevertheless, Kuda Auto continues to pursue its transformation at full speed and will again deliver higher returns once the circumstances have normalized. Ladies and gentlemen, we present comparable figures in the official annual report of our individual Czech company, Skoda Auto, as explained before uh, by Mr. Schäfer. This report is prepared in accordance with IFRS standards and published online just a couple minutes ago. You can find all the details there, so I will just highlight the key statements. The revenue plummeted by 7.6%, to 424 billion crowns in 2020. We reduced cost on the other side, cost of sales by 4% to 381 billion Czech crowns. Countermeasures had a positive impact along with declining sales. 
though we faced also headwinds, notably exceeding European CO2 limits, and therefore we had to reserve in the books. Gross profits, therefore, decreased to 43 billion Czech crowns. Pre-tax earnings dropped to 17.9 billion Czech crowns because of foreign exchange losses on current accounts and the financial income squeezed by lower interest rates. Going forward, the results give me good reason to be optimistic. Skoda Auto RS is a sustainable, profitable company with a solid financial position. Let's now look ahead to 2021. This year is likely to be another big challenge as the pandemic continues. Yet, we stick to our existing plans. Assuming stable operations, we expect Skoda Auto's group performance to improve, with sales revenue significantly above the level of last year. Ladies and gentlemen, in its 125-year history, Skoda Auto has shown many times how well it can deal with the unexpected. What's more, Skoda's DNA contains the drive for cost-saving, radical streamlining in a simply clever way. These strengths are an absolute priority for us for the future. We shape the future under the guiding principle next level. To get there, we will entail a financial tour de force for the Skoda Auto Group. The funds for the future must be earned and generated today, and the winners of tomorrow will have a lean cost base. Having launched the next level efficiency program, we set the conditions for sustainable profitability and further transformation. Our ambition is to reduce all costs and expenses so that we can free up funds and resources to invest into key priorities for the future. We are therefore re-examining re our fixed costs even further we are reducing complexity and streamlining our structures and processes. We are making the most of new work and digitization for integrated processes and responsibility. Rest assured, we will be implementing these in true Skoda fashion, cost effectively and radically simplified. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention. My colleague, Mr. Jan, will now present detailed information on sales and regional topics. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure and privilege for me to return to Škoda Auto after more than 12 years working for Volkswagen Group and Volkswagen brand in Russia, Germany and China. I'm very much looking forward to connect uh, Škoda's outstanding heritage with the fascinating future of electric mobility, connected car, digital services, and exploring new markets with Škoda brand. However, before we give you an outlook on Škoda's future, let us have a look how Škoda has developed in the most important sales regions in 2020. Of course, due to the pandemic, the year 2020 was full of unforeseen challenges for our industry. Nevertheless, as the Škoda family, we are very proud to have achieved more than 1 million customer deliveries in 2020. In Western Europe, our deliveries to customers decreased by 16.5% to, 4, to 434,500 vehicles, while the total markets decreased by 24.5%. This results uh, in an outstanding market share performance of uh, plus uh, 0.38 percentage points. Germany remains uh, Škoda's second strongest single market, delivering uh, 161, 800,000 vehicles. We are for 12th time in a row the number one import brand, and we are consolidating our position among the renowned volume brands. Škoda was also able to increase its importance in further numerous Western European countries. Just to name a few, in Austria, we increased our market share by 1.22 percentage points, in Belgium by 0.85 percentage points, in Great Britain by 0.33 percentage points, in Italy by 0.41 percentage points. In Norway, we were even able to increase our total deliveries by 2.2 percent versus 2019. In Central Europe, 
Škoda's deliveries decreased by 15.7% to 181,900 vehicles. In our home market, Czech Republic, we lost 11.6%, uh, but could increase our market share up to 41%, which is 3.3% more than in 2019. Incidentally, we are the only brand worldwide whose market share in a single country has been more than 30% for decades. And overall, we were able to increase our performance in all further Central European markets as well. This really proves the strengths of Škoda brand. In Eastern Europe, excluding Russia, we had a drop of 20.8% uh, to 39,800 vehicles. Despite the crisis, we maintained our strong ranking position and our two markets, Bulgaria and Estonia, even achieved a historically best market share. In Russia, contrary to the trend, we grew further by 6.8% to 94,600 units and we have continued to expand our market share up to 6.4%. In China, our business was also severely affected by the overall market trend, especially in the volume segment. At 173,000 vehicles, our deliveries were 38.7% below the previous year's levels. In India, we delivered uh, 10,902 vehicles in 2020, a decline of 27.9% uh, caused by the product unavailability. Last year, was the bridging year before the introduction of our India 2.0 models, such as the beautiful all-new Kushak, who is here with us and who celebrated its world premiere last week. Moving now on to give you an overview of Škoda models. Deliveries of the electric Citigo E IV increased to 14,600 units last year, while the ICE version ran out in 2020 in line with the life cycle trend. The Fabia deliveries increased by 39% to 105,500 vehicles. The decline is mostly driven by the general market trend due to COVID-19. With the current generation in its last year, we are very much looking at the new Fabia just around the corner. As expected, uh, we delivered few vehicles from the Rapid series with 79,700 units since the production in Europe ended in 2019 and the vehicle only continues in China, Russia and India. The Scala continued its success story. After a strong start in 2019, we could further increase our deliveries of up to 63,200 vehicles. The Octavia is the Škoda's best-selling model series. In 2020, we delivered 257,400 units. With the launch of the eighth model generation in 2020, we were able to continue its success story. We delivered 86,200 units of our flagship Superb series, a decrease of 17.8%. And now on to the SUVs. These segments continue to grow dynamically around the world, and Škoda is no exception. More than one in every three Škoda sold last year was an SUV. Our large SUV, the Kodiak, is performing very strongly. In 2020, we delivered 131,600 units. The Kodiak GT, our China derivative, is performing in its segment also very well, and at the same time, it is the highlight of our China SUV range with its unique coupe shape. One out of three Kodiak in China is already delivered in the GT version. We delivered 137,200 units of the Karok, which is, despite the crisis, only 10% below last year. The Kamig was able to double its deliveries in 2020 up to 128,500 units. Together with the China derivative, the smallest member of our SUV family took over an important role in the relevant segments. In China, 40% are already delivered in the GT version. The model that we are most excited this year about is ENIAC IV. With this car, we are entering a new era of worry-free electric mobility. 
After our world premiere here in our home turf in Prague, we are more than thrilled about the media and customer feedback we are receiving. Over 20,000 customer orders in the first months are a clear proof of this model of future success. And it's not only about the model itself, but also about the whole ecosystem that we are building around it. For example, our PowerPass application to make charging as easy and as comfortable as possible. One single Škoda customer card gives you access to all overall European Chinese charging network. So let's call it a transition of our well-known Simply Clever principle to the digital world. Simply Clever 2.0, so to say. Ladies and gentlemen, our positive performance through the crisis, as well as the positive international press response and numerous, numerous awards, including the Auto Trophy 2020 for the ENIAC, the Best Cars Award for the Octavia, and the Red Dot Design Award for the coming GT show, that we are meeting our customers' taste. With this, our solid performance despite the crisis, gaining market share in most regions, and the ENIAC IV just around the corner, I'm looking very confident into the future. Please let me take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you to our importers, dealers, business partners, and most importantly, to our Škoda customers. Thank you for your trust, and of course, thank you for good performance in such difficult times. As the year 2020 has ended, 2021 still has many challenges ahead of us. The uncertainty of our global markets due to pandemic situation will continue, and on top of that, the whole automotive sector is facing supply constraints due to the shortage of available semiconductors. Still, I am cautiously optimistic about the upcoming months. We will continue with our product campaign and will launch promising new models this year. And more on that topic and a general outlook on 2021 now from Thomas Schaeffer. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, I now come to the outlook for the current business year. One thing is clear, 2021 is and will remain extremely challenging and volatile. Corona is not yet defeated. We are actively fighting the virus. At the beginning of March, we once again vastly expanded testing cap capacities at our Czech locations. Every employee working in the factory or office is now being tested once a week free of charge. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our vaccination centers are ready to vaccinate the Škoda Auto team against COVID-19 at all Czech locations. As soon as the vaccine becomes available, we will get started quickly, flexibly, and of course, free of charge for the workforce. In cooperation with our social partner, Kovo, we are doing everything we can to protect our employees. And it's not just the virus itself that challenges us, but also its side effects. Like everyone in the industry, we are challenged by the supply shortage of semiconductors. Currently, we cannot assess the impact yet. However, we keep on fighting for every single car with effective countermeasures, for example, by adapting our production processes according to demand. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to deal with the pandemic, but we won't let it stop us. Škoda has some fantastic new products in the pipeline. It'll be an exciting year. The first one is the Europe-wide rollout of our ENIAC IV. Due to high demand, we are increasing our production capacities to up to 350 units per day. I'm particularly looking forward to the world premiere of the ENIAC IV Coupé, our second highly evocative all-electric car built on the MEB platform. The world premiere of the new Fabia generation is coming up in May. It's already looking, I'm already looking forward to it, and I received a lot of positive feedback from you during the covered drive in Selamsee in February. The new generation once again delivers on our promise of offering the best value for money in the entry level segment. Furthermore, we will once again bring a combi variant to the market. <clears throat> 
and we are making our best-selling SUVs, Kodiak and Karok, fit for the years ahead. These new models for 2021 demonstrate how impressively Škoda has evolved into an international player over recent years. Our model campaign is by no means limited to Europe. We'll also be making a new start on the Chinese market in 2021. Just a few weeks ago, we introduced our new Octavia Pro. It meets the same high technical quality standards as the European RS version and has been specifically tailored to customers' needs in China, with a longer wheelbase and a slightly modified, very emotive design. There are more than 1.4 million Octavia owners across China. I'm sure there will be soon many more thanks to the Octavia Pro. India is also making great strides. After two and a half years of intensive work on the India 2.0 project, the big moment has now arrived. A week ago, we presented the Kushak. Here it is. Our compact SUV is the first of four models that we will be releasing before the end of 2022. Two from Skoda and two from Volkswagen. We are counting on the Indian market, as is the International Monetary Fund, by the way. It expects India's economy to grow by 11.5% this year. We are also stepping up our activities for the group in Russia and North Africa. We see huge potential in both regions. In Russia, we are benefiting from our many years of experience and from our deep understanding of the region. Last year, we were able to increase our market share to 6.8 percentage points. We want to maintain the successful course. We're also going to strengthen our activities in Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. Egypt alone has around 100 million inhabitants and wants to become a car nation. We are analyzing how we can leverage this potential. Ladies and gentlemen, this year, in four days to be precise, we are celebrating a momentous anniversary. Škoda has been part of the Volkswagen Group for 30 years. After the Czech Minister of Industry at the time, Jan Weber, and the former VW Chairman of the Board, Karl Hahn, signed the contract in 1991, which you can see here, a true European success story unfolded. Our annual vehicle deliveries have increased sixfold since then. We now operate in more than 100 markets. In addition to the three original Czech production sites, we also produce in China, Russia, Slovakia, India, and Ukraine. We are the largest private sector company in the Czech Republic and account for 5% of the country's gross domestic product and 9% of its exports. Our brand is a real asset to the Volkswagen Group and now has taken on responsibility in a variety of ways, for example, in the regions and in production. The people involved at that time set the right course for the impressive development of Škoda Auto with determination, foresight, and courage. It is precisely these qualities that are important now, looking ahead. This decade will determine Škoda Auto's long-term competitiveness. Our company will certainly be very different, electrified, digital, and even more international than it is today. We are working intensively on our strategy 2030, next level Škoda, which we'll be presenting to you later this year. It builds on the principles expand, explore, and engage that are already outlined in the first part of my speech, leading us through this process in our authentic Škoda spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, with the long-term CO2 target set in 2020, the direction is now clear. Our core market in Europe is going to be the electric car market. Of course, we want to take a big slice of this cake to safeguard jobs at Škoda and in the Czech Republic. So what are we doing specifically to achieve this? We have brought electromobility to the Czech Republic and in addition to our electric and plug-in hybrid models, we manufacture vital electric components here, including for the Volkswagen, Audi and Seat brands. And this development will continue. I expect Škoda to have an electric share in Europe of more than 50% by 2030. There are still a few hurdles to overcome along the way. However, for example, 
we need more green electricity and we urgently need a better infrastructure for electric vehicles. Also, it's clear that an automotive location as important as the Czech Republic will be handling battery production for electric vehicles in the future. We can see from the example of Spain how the private sector and politicians can work together to develop solutions to secure the future. The Volkswagen Group announced on Monday to build six gigafactories in Europe by 2030 together with partners. So far, no decision has yet been made for any other site than Salzgitter in Germany and the location in Sweden. Further decisions will be taken after thorough negotiations and with all responsible partners from private and public sectors in different countries. With regard to Czech Republic, Škoda would be happy to be part of it. The Gigafactory would be the next logical step to transform the Czech Republic into an e-mobility hub. And that again brings us one step closer to our common goal. We want to make Škoda and the Czech Republic the winners in the automotive industry transformation process. Thank you very much for your attention, and we are now happy to answer any questions you might have. And therefore, I ask my colleagues to join me here on stage. So now we are ready to answer your questions and we received, Thomas, quite a lot of questions already. Oh, good. Uh, maybe start with an urgent one uh, from uh, Jan Schwarz from Reuters. Um, could you please give us an update on the impact of chip bottleneck on production? Yeah, so <clears throat> we, as many other uh, car manufacturers around the world, are affected by this um, topic. And as you know, that the car industry is not really the, the main um, cons consumer of, of uh, semiconductor chips. It's actually more in the consumer industry. So um, we're all fighting a similar war. Certain suppliers have more difficulties, certain parts have less. So we, we are handling it at the moment. It's, it is uh, a major issue for us. We have to um, re reroute production, uh, reconfigure, and I would say at the moment we, we make do, but it it will follow us for a while, we believe. No? So it's, it's not over yet. We have been able to cleverly move around. Yeah, but for now, the total impact is not quite visible yet, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, the second question goes to uh, Mr. Popchik. Um, um, how are the negotiations with the government on vaccination possibilities at Skoda Blanz in, in Czech Republic? Maybe, Thomas, you can also comment on that. And uh, what is um, your feedback from the employees as to their willingness to get vaccinated? Well, if I may, I will respond. We have launched this project. We are try to, trying to raise awareness. And basically, we have approximately 9,000 people who are interested in getting a vaccine. Uh, we are now uh, raising awareness of a very good application that can be used for that. And we think this project will be very successful. We have several priorities and uh, in, uh, when it comes to this project. Definitely, we want to make sure that the vaccine gets to those who need it most first. And there will be no, let's say, high priority internal groups who would be able to get vaccines as a priority before all the others. But as soon as we have the vaccine as it's available, we would like to start vac vaccinations at the production lines because that's what is most important to us right now. We need to produce cars and we need to be able to deliver cars to customers. And you know how strong a headwind the pandemic has been so far. We need to be able to deliver, for example, very high numbers of the Fabia, Fabia Combi vehicles. And we need to be able to do that. So first, we would like to be able to vaccinate these employees first. So we are able to produce. So that's what we are doing right now when it comes to 
testing, COVID-19 testing. And the question was also about the negotiations with the government. Currently, we are unable to negotiate with the government about vaccinations. The government is right now um, in the middle of a very chaotic situation, just like many other countries. There are many uh, contradicting uh, opinions on this, and we need to obviously uh, vaccine the population, just like many other countries. Thomas, so, you want yeah, to add something? So, yeah, what Mr. Povchik said uh, is, is very clear. I mean, we will not jump the gun. No? We will wait for our turn, as is the rules within the government, within the country. So we will not push further and quicker into this when it's our turn. We are ready. We have done everything in the factory together. We have prepared the sites. We can vaccine at large numbers immediately when the vaccine arrives. So we're hoping that we we get to this point very soon. Yeah. Um, Thomas, you already, uh, um, Thomas, you already mentioned today the, the share, the possible share of electric cars in 2030. There's a question about that. Uh, what about Skoda Auto and the future of the internal combustion engines? Uh, do you have a plan f uh, for the end of ICEs or uh, will you once just stop developing new inter uh, internal combustion engines and con continue using them? So how is it with the development? Yeah, look, this is obviously a, a transitional time that we are all in, uh, so difficult to forecast what will happen. We, we see that certain regions are developing a lot faster than others. So Europe is becoming clearer and clearer uh, with the New Green Deal. New Green Deal. Um, China, US, and so on, that it's all happening, um, whereas other regions are slightly behind, maybe. Um, so for now, we cannot see what really happens beyond 2030. But um, in our plans, we now need to invest for the future, which we are doing uh, with our electric vehicles. But it's also not the time to switch off the, um, the existing models and, and forget them, because that's where we um, have customers around the world still, and maybe for a few more years to come. No? So we, we have to balance it in this transitional phase, and I think we, we have a very good base now with refreshed models, with new models that we've just started, no? the Fabia this year, the Octavia last year. So we have a whole bunch of new cars that refreshed portfolio that will carry us for many years now. Okay, then we have a question to our CFO. Could you please specify the amount of investment made in the Czech Republic last year and the investment expected in 2021? Well, as I, as I mentioned in the speech before, we invested 850 million euros last year out of those 380 in our uh, Czech plants. And the major topics were automation in Kwasini and uh, CO2. Um, uh, neutrality in uh, Vahlabi, and in addition, we invested in Lada Boleslav here in particular into e mobility. And for that, all we invested uh, in the plants, particularly 380 million. Another 200 million we invested in India for this wonderful vehicle and the whole generation of these vehicles last year. And obviously, also investments went into uh, the wonderful vehicle on the left side, the ENIAC, and the new Octavia last year. So basically, uh, besides the investments in India, everything was invested into either the plants in the Czech Republic or into our vehicles. Uh, thanks, Kedi. Um, I think a, a good question and interesting question uh, which many journalists raised uh, here, herefore I just uh, use Nick Gibbs' questions from Automotive News Europe. When do you hope to have a version of the Volkswagen Group entry MEB and will it be built in the Czech Republic? I think quite a hot topic, Thomas. Yeah, look, this uh, is a group topic at the moment, no? and uh, of course, if the group's working on that, you know, we want to be part of this. Um, we see when we are the the cars that we are the school brand that plays very very strongly in that in that segment anyway in the ICE in the normal segments, but we we also see our future there. So we'll, we will fight for this, and we will um, um, work with the group on this. Will it be built in uh, Czech Republic or anywhere else? That's not quite clear yet. No? The group has got uh, synergies around the globe. We are building uh, Seats, for example, in Czech Republic. Um, that's no problem for us. So we will we'll, we'll have to balance this for now. Yeah. Not, not decided yet. Uh, maybe in addition to that from, from John McElroy from, from Auto Express, uh, ENYAC is launching this year. 
Uh, is it fair to say that the next Skoda EV after it is likely to be a smaller and more affordable hatchback model similar in its size to the ID3 from Volkswagen? Um, yeah, we are working on um, the next model smaller than the ENIAC, that's true. Um, but it would be too early to say what shape that car would be. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, next question goes again to Mr. Povchik. Um, how are you satisfied with the company's COVID-19 measures? What is your opinion regarding the hard lockdown that is being discussed for the Easter time? So last year we have witnessed a hard lockdown and we noticed how difficult it was and how this can be solved even without hard lockdown because at the end of the lockdown we basically uh, said to ourselves that we will not do it because I mean it would have to be uh, really um, connected with some very dramatic situation and uh, I mean uh, you know we're still sticking to it and all the measures that you have seen I mean we have introduced about 80 countermeasures so I think I think from our side we had about 50 uh, countermeasures that came from the uh, bottom, from the shop floor basically, that we wanted to uh, accommodate uh, the uh, um, employees. And I think uh, basically uh, the power of the company uh, came uh, to the forefront because, I mean, we already invested about 1.3 billion Czech crowns into these countermeasures and this is really a very significant step and I think the employees are really seeing this and they're very happy about it and they are really sticking to these countermeasures and I mean to be quite clear uh, we and uh, neither me is uh, we are not advocates of the lockdown and will be fighting to preserve uh, the manufacturing of each and every wheel because this gives us the opportunity for the future to keep our jobs and employment and of course this generates our bonuses and uh, our money so uh, no to lockdown from our side no no, no. okay Great. thanks uh, why are there no plans to electrify the new Fabia? Will its life cycle be shorter than normal to allow uh, in, an introduction of a new model on uh, entry MAB or maybe Martin? We wanna... yeah. 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 yeah, I think that we <coughs> we need to expand our portfolio of uh, battery electric vehicles. That is very clear, and it's clear that we will be bringing smaller cars uh, than uh, than ENIAC. Uh, uh, whether it uh, makes sense to electrify the, the Fabia, I'm, I'm not so sure. I think we really have to use uh, the potential of the MEB platform and bring cars that are destined for the next uh, level of electric cars. So I, I, I think we should focus on the MEB platform. Okay, um, how is your strategy 2025 changing in the view of the development of the pandemic? What car models are you planning for the next three years. So the intention, I think, is do we have some change in our model plans or not? Yeah, but, but not uh, because we, we, I mean, we obviously permanently rework the portfolio and the plan forward, but um, obviously not because of uh, COVID. No, that is uh, because of legislation and, and in overall development of uh, the car industry you know, in, in around the world. So it's, it's not COVID related. I think the focus is now a lot stronger on electrification, on um, the balance for this transitional phase between how much combustion uh, engine technology do you keep and, and when do you change into electric mobility, what can we afford? No? We, we cannot just switch and move, move from the one to the other, it has to be a balanced effort and a transitional phase and, and that gets reworked perpetually and uh, like we, we heard earlier from Klaus-Dieter Schürmann, we have to pay for this. You know, there's nobody that pays this uh, other than we out of our own uh, pocket. No? So we need to generate and trans transform. Yeah. Uh, many journalists are interested in the discussions of uh, a possible gigafactory in the Czech Republic. Um, uh, many of them are mentioning Škoda Auto and maybe Chess and the government as a partner. Um, what is our view on, on how could we participate in it? What is how we see that development? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's a great development. Um, honestly, um, believe that uh, we need at least uh, one gigafactory here in the uh, Czech Republic. Uh, it's the right place to do that for many reasons. Um, not only logistically, because we are in the heart of Europe, we are close to many automotive 
countries around us. So I, I believe it's, it's a great location to do that. There's lithium in the Czech Republic. So there's good reason to have one, uh, also for the future, no? um, that we, we as Škoda play a major role in, uh, in the economy of this country. And if the company changes, the infrastructure needs to change with it no? to be successful for the future. We cannot import such critical components forever from somewhere else. We need to also make them. No? So it's, I think it's important to look into this. And discussions are on the way, but early times. No? Mm -hmm. um, you've talked before about an electric city car and an EV equivalent to Octavia. Which is due first and when will we see it? Yes, I've, <clears throat> um, I've said two things. The one thing is that we need a car smaller than the Enyaq, and I said we need a, a car ultimately that will ultimately replace the Octavia or a place in that league of a, of a flat-seater uh, flat um, vehicle. Um, our priority at the moment is uh, obviously the car below the Enyaq no, that we are working on with priority. The other one is for um, beyond 25, and I would say it's a bit early to, to discuss that mm -hmm. in detail. Mm -hmm. So then uh, I received one interesting question via mail. More and more Chinese brands, such as NIO, BYD, and MG, want to implement their expansion plans in the direction of Europe. Um, the more electric the terrain becomes, which the automotive market is playing, the better is for China, because it has been building up expertise for many years. Are you concerned about this development? Oh, look, um, <laughs> I still remember when everybody was afraid of the Japanese manufacturers who would uh, eclipse uh, anything of the past. Then. That didn't happen, and the Koreans came, and, and so, so it's always it's nothing wrong with the Chinese uh, manufacturers coming, and uh, it's, that's fair enough to say. The competition is getting tougher no, in this market. Uh, um, the, we will face it, and we will still, I believe, we will still be successful in this. We are not afraid of them, and I mean, Martin can maybe also comment on that. He's been in China for many years now. He knows the market. The development is fast. I have to say that, first of all, we have very strong base in Europe, very strong brand, very strong dealer network. So we have very strong footprint, and, and we believe that we can keep this footprint in terms of market share also in the electric era of the, of the new mobility. Of course, this era brings many new challenges, including new uh, competition. And we've been talking uh, for a long time about the transformation of the industry. Yeah? And this transformation is coming as putting a lot of pressure on us in terms of new services, new products, uh, and also new competition. So we just take it as it is, and we try what we always try to, to bring the best cars, the best services to the market, and believe that we uh, can persuade the clients and customers to buy our cars. There's a high interest on, on ENYAC, um, customer demand, and also um, uh, production capacity. What is your production target for the ENYAC IV this year? And what is the maximum possible production you can achieve in 2021 for the ENYAC? Can we somehow comment on figures? Well, um, good, good point is that we have ramped up um, production very fast. The ENYAC, um, our team has prepared extremely well for it. Um, the ramp up actually went a bit faster than we thought, which is fantastic. Um, we are now aiming for 350 cars uh, per day in production. Um, what the total number will be for this year, not quite sure yet. Depends on obviously the, the working days, working hours that we can push through plus the availability of batteries that is also a global uh, story and semiconductors obviously so so not quite sure what it will be but we can do 350 a day uh, and that we can do solidly now the, the, the good news is that the the, um, the demand for this car is so big that we can easily sell everything that uh, will be produced uh. I think that that's a clear answer. Mm -hmm. uh, um, maybe something um, um, Mr. Schirmann can uh, comment on. Are you planning to invest in innovations of plants despite the fact of the pandemic crisis? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we're constantly investing into our existing plants in order to keep them up uh, on the highest technological level that we can uh, see. And I mentioned it earlier, we have done that already concerning, for example, CO2 standards in Wachlabi, where last year, at the end of the year, we achieved uh, neutrality. So 
um, yes, we are investing continuously into our plants. Um, maybe one interesting question regarding the, the positioning we received via the mail. Uh, the fact that Skoda has been very successful for years, and the question comes from Switzerland as an mm -hmm. example, is essentially also due to the excellence price ratio, uh, performance ratio. Mm -hmm. However, the competition from Korea and France has caught up consistently in this respect. This is also because Skoda tends to be more expensive. Can you and do you want to become stronger again in the volume market, in the affordable car segments? And if yes, how? Martin, no? Mm. So I, I think we we have very specific uh, 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 we have very specific space uh, in in the customer demand. Uh, Škoda was always based uh, on simply clever, on human touch, on, on a lot of space in in the car, and we recently bring this to the new level also with a beautiful uh, design. Uh, and we we don't want to be the cheapest, uh, but we want to always offer the value for money, which, which also means that if we bring a car in in the B segment, it's still good value for uh, uh, for money. So so uh, our position does not mean that we have to focus only on uh, A00 and A0 cars. Uh, we would like to expand also in the lower segments, but at the moment we are basically limited by production. Yeah? All of our plants are running at the full capacity. Uh, we could sell more. I think Škoda has been consistently saying over the last couple of years we could sell more, but we do not have enough uh, capacity. Eh? If we achieve this uh, capacity, we will, uh, uh, we will sell more. We are bringing new models. We just launched the new Fabia. We will bring the new Fabia Combi uh, in the future, which is also a beautiful car. So yes, we will focus more on the, on the lower segments, uh, but we are basically covering the whole portfolio from A0 to, uh, to B, always offering good value for money. So then um, there's a question uh, regarding the cost-cutting measures in the Volkswagen Group. Um, and I would like Mr. Povšik and also maybe Thomas to comment on that. Uh, what are the expected reductions of, uh, of internal employees in connection with this cost cutting program? Uh, the unions reject any staff reductions. Uh, what is the status of, of possible negotiations? If I may, I will start because uh, the CEO has already talked about this particular project. Yes, of course, there are some very strict group-wide measures, and we have been cooperating with the entire uh, board of directors, also with, with Ms. Greff, who is present today, and I'm very happy that she's now part of the team. And the basis is the same for all of us. In the past, there have already been very strict cost-cutting measures. So right now, we our baseline is different than the group-wide baseline. And we now need to convince the group that what we have done so far is sufficient. So we are in complete agreement. And we have also talked about this at the uh, board meetings also within the group. And I've been talking about this also at the council uh, works council level at the group, uh, group level. We will be doing this in stages. There will, for example, be some uh, retraining costs involved. There will be some technological measures involved. That's where we are able to optimize. But we have agreed that in no way will there be any measures introduced that will be limiting our further development, i.e. new products, new projects. We need all that investment. And we also need people for that. So there is no uh, stepping back from that. That's where we are clear. So yes, rationalization is needed to a certain extent, but it needs to be, it needs to make sense. It needs to be, be optimal and it needs to bring added value. And maybe to add to this, um, there's always bureaucracy that you can like improve. No? So I still, now after being here now for eight months with the company, we still have some processes that we can improve. That doesn't mean we let people go. No, that, that's not, that's off the table. We are talking about optimizing it and like Mr. Povšik said, retraining, reallocating. But we need to continuously work on our competitiveness. Škoda is a great company that has done amazing things in the past. Where we are right now is within the industry, I think, um, on, a, on a benchmark level, but that doesn't mean one can't work on further improvements. And it's more about optimizing 
um, processes, efficiencies, end-to-end -end process improvement. No? So there's, there's more we can do, and we are in discussions how we can approach this together so that this is uh, best for the company and its future. No? So thanks, gentlemen. If I may, just one additional comment. What is essential is that there will be no reductions in the headcount in the company. That is clear. We will now make all our processes more dynamic, but all our employees will be able to work. There will be retraining programs, as the CEO has said. There will be many new uh, posts when it comes to, for example, e-mobility, many new processes. But I can promise you that there will be no re reductions in the headcount. So uh, we have uh, time for two last questions. Um, interesting one. Do you think that Corona has sustainably pushed individual, individualized motorized transport to the extent that many people have rediscovered the car as a protection against contagion compared to the public transport? Well, uh, it's fair to say that uh, obviously um, out of individual safety aspects, um, there is a trend in this direction. Will that be a sustainable trend again, or will that continue? Maybe too early to say. We're all hoping that um, after summer, uh, vaccinations have reached a level that we can make decisions that are not COVID-based, uh, but in individual opinions. No? So I'm. I'd say we see the trend no? that has happened over the last couple of months, no? but is that a sustainable one? Not so sure. Okay, uh, I think the last question is, uh, is perfect for a final statement from your side. A look into the year 2025. Why then is Skoda still as successful on the road as it is now? In 2025? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say in 2025, um, that'll be um, probably we can the acceleration year where where we can see the um, the preparation work that we have done over the last years and that we are busy with now paying full in. No? We'll have an electric lineup that will help us really get into that market strongly. We still have uh, new models that we have now launched in this year that will be at their peak. No? So 2025 will probably also give you a clearer perspective on where the world is going and, and how we can then adjust the product portfolio going further beyond the 2030 and, and so on. So, um, But we're, in a, we're well prepared for this. I believe we have done everything last year to set up the company on a new level with uh, digitalization. We are working perpetually on this, get the cost level right, no, more than we have today even, and prepare us for this decade that is the most challenging in its existence of the automotive industry. So, yeah, I think 2025 is going to be an interesting year. <laughs> thanks, Thomas. Gentlemen, thanks. Dear, dear media guests, thank you for watching the Skoda Auto Annual Press Conference 2021. We wish you all a nice day, and the most important thing is stay healthy.